step is for you to choose a route at the Minnesota Bee Atlas website. You can just zoom in on the map of Minnesota to get a more exact location for the route and you can click on it and choose to claim it when you're ready to pick your route. Before you run the route your first time, scout your route out. So get to know the different turns on your route and make note if there's any road constructions or anything like that that you need to um, be aware of. Begin your route. Um, just go to the, the, the first stop, the beginning on the route, and set your trip meter to zero. It's best to park off, side, uh, off to the side of a main road if you can. Just make sure that you're parking in an area where it's safe to, for you to get in and out of your car. We're going to be sampling along roadsides. So it should be clear where the roadside ends and where someone's property begins. So make sure you're not going into farmer's fields. We'll be looking for blooms along the roadsides. And when you're there, you can take mental notes of things that might be flowering in the future for the next time that you're out. If there are no sampling spots at your that first location at the beginning of the route, keep moving on down the road. Stop every mile. You just need to find five survey stops along the route and you want about a mile in between. So once you do find a spot with that has flowers and there's bees that are active on the flowers, Take out your survey data sheet and fill out the top portion. For the GPS location, you can get that from a handheld GPS unit from your phone or from an app on your phone. I use my GPS coordinates so I can email the locations to myself. Start the timer and start collecting bumblebees. I use a timer that's also on my phone, but you can also use any kind of timer on a watch or other handheld timer. You collect the bees in plastic vials, so just wait for a bee to settle in on a flower, and then you can just close this vial around her. The bees tend to fly up, so if you turn it upside down, she'll fly up, and you should be able to get the flower out of the vial so we're not ripping the flowers off. And then you can just snap the vial shut. Every few minutes, take the bees that you've collected and put them on ice. So I have a cooler here with ice in it. You can just set her in there. They'll be fine in there for a while. They'll become inactive and slow down a bit. If you forget your cooler, you can also just grab a bag of ice from a gas station and stick the bees in there. After 10 minutes of collecting time, tally up your bees and take photos of ones you need to take photos of. So a tally sheet. Bees may take a little while to wake up. Sometimes they will be sitting there for a little bit. Make sure you're not leaving them in direct sun, so just place them in the shade and they will eventually fly off. Take photos of any bumblebees that you can't ID. So sometimes the bees will just be a little bit slower once they've um, been in the cooler with the ice. This one is actually knocked out, but you can put her into the photo tube and just place the top in there and then take a photo with any kind of a camera. Here I'm using my phone, but I usually use just a point and shoot digital camera. People have also used the single lens reflex cameras and those also work fine. Just make sure that you're centering your lens over the bee. And um, the next step will be to take note of the file name or other kind of marker that you have for the bee. If the bee is completely knocked out like this one is, you can also take a photo without a photo tube. For all photos, try to get a view of the top and the side of the thorax, the front of the face, and the top of the abdomen. On the data sheet, give each specimen a unique number and then also write down the number of photos and any kind of ID number that you need or a timestamp to match up that photo with that bee. Take a photo of any unknown flowers from which you collected bees. 
Continue until you have completed surveys at five different stops. Once home, you enter your data and upload your photos to the Minnesota Bee Atlas website. You can go there and add a survey onto your route that you already have. Here I'm just adding some. I already kind of started the survey information here for this stop. And what you can do is add uh, the stops one by one. For the stop name, I'm giving them the names for the flowers that I was collecting off of there. Here I'm grabbing the latitude and longitude from the email that was sent to me from my app, the My GPS coordinates, so I can just cut and paste those. Otherwise, if you have those, the latitude and longitude written down in your notes, you can just transfer that. You'll enter in this other information that you already have recorded on your data sheet. So we're just transferring it to this online format. For the habitat description, it will help to know kind of what area it's in. So these are all gonna be along roadsides, but are they a residential area? Is it in an agricultural area? And then also say something about the kind of vegetation that you're seeing around there. Now that you have the basic information in for that survey stop, we can start adding the species in. So first we're going to add a species count. These are the tallies of the bees that we already identified. So for each species, sex, and forage plant, you'll have a number of bees that you found. If you have a photo of the plant, if you're not sure what the identity of the plant is, there is a place where you can add on a photo of that plant and that will be connected with that observation and you can see the photo there make sure it's there if you click go back to stop one you can continue either adding another count for another species here we're going to add an individual specimen so these are the ones from the photos for the ones that we weren't sure so you you have a unique ident identifier for it we do want you to guess what it was so take a guess on the species and sex, and then we are going to add images. So here I have my files named so that it's clear of the date of the stop, and this was my first stop and my first B at that first stop. And I upload that photo. I do have another photo, so I can just add another image that will all be connected with just that same B. You can go back to just overview the information, double check and make sure that you've entered things correctly, make sure that you've entered in all of the species and you've gotten all of your photos in for that stop. And then you can go to the main menu and you can um, add another stop to the survey if you need to, or you can move on. Occasionally, a bumblebee may be accidentally killed during this process. It's not very often that this happens, but we can use these specimens. So what we're asking you to do is to put these specimens into a plastic vial along with one of these labels. You will put it in your freezer and at the end of the season, mail them all to us. helping us learn more about Minnesota bumblebees. And good luck out there this summer on your bumblebee hunts. <laughs>